Hey guys, what's happening? This is Nigel, the Slick Pastor. Welcome to this question and answer session. So you asked questions on my Facebook and my Instagram. So I'm now responding to those questions. Before we get into it, if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe. If you're watching this on Facebook, share the video and like the page. If you're watching this on Instagram, um, please give me some money. DM and I'll give you my payment details. Just give me some money if you're watching this on Instagram. Give me money. Okay, so let's get into it. How old are you? I am 28. Born on the 10th of November, 1991. I feel old saying that. So yes, get ready for my birthday. I've told you well in advance. Um, presents. My favorite color is black. And I love money. I really love, I like money. So yeah, money will do. Are you married and do you have kids? I'm not married. Therefore, I do not have kids. Oh, well, you can, <laughs> you can be married. You can have kids without being married. But no, for me, the answer is no. I am not married and I do not have children. Um, why did you leave the UAE? Okay, I once stayed in the UAE, United Arab Emirates, Dubai to be specific. I was there for about um, uh, more than half a year. I think about eight months I was working there. But it wasn't working out for me. I was trying to uh, move from my previous job to a new one. And then that didn't work out. Plus, also, even when I was working the old job, I was so, so unhappy. I was feeling depressed on a day-to-day -day basis like i used to work from uh, 7 a 8 a.m to 7 p.m that's like 11 hours a day and it was so routine like you know i was just doing the same thing over and over again to be honest i am very grateful for that time in my life it taught me a lot of things about patience dedication humility hard work and focus and all that but i hated it i hated it there and through circumstances and conditions god just kind of created a way for me to find myself back in Zim. And then I started pursuing my talent and my gift full time. I think I'll have to tell that story um, on a different day because it's, it is quite a story, but yeah. So I left the UAE because it, it wasn't really working out for me, man. And, and it wasn't paying, it, it wasn't paying. For me, it wasn't paying. I was not making as much money as I thought I would when I was going there. Are you a real pastor? No, I'm not. Please guys, I'm not an actual, I'm not a real pastor. I'm just the slick pastor. Well, my jokes i'm not a real pastor so please um don't you know you can bring your tithe though i mean yeah but don't bring your um, problems okay where did you meet the comic pastor we met at a charity event um in 2018 in airport that was i think february or march that's when we met we exchanged contacts he's a really cool fella so i was just like ah but I don't get my video because I was already started in 2017, so I've been doing it for about a year. So exchange context, but because I was uh, still caught up with school, and then also he being a busy guy, you know, we hardly kept, uh, we just kept in touch from a distance. But then when I finally came back in 2019, May June, we reconnected and we started working together, and it's been the most amazing thing that has happened in my professional career so far. Do you have a job besides comedy? I run, I run, I run uh, media. I'm a partner in a media company slash advertising agency. So we create content for organizations and companies and help them send messages across to their audiences and try to reach more people and help them market and stuff like that. Apart from that, I'm also an MC for events, corporate, social, uh, personal, private, and stuff like that. And I'm also a speaker. You can invite me to speak. Whatever you want me to speak on, I will speak. Just give me a microphone and I will speak. Hey, okay, tell us about your primary, your high school, your siblings, your, citiz your citizenship. Okay, your primary, your high school, siblings, and citizenship. Uh, my primary, I did it at Gillingham Primary School in Zwaraseqwa. My grade one, my grade one and two teacher was Mrs. Nguyen. I loved that woman. She was in Devele. She was really tough on me. And then my grade uh, three in the Wakanga I started out. Grade four, to this one is Mrs. Murinda Goma, Mrs. Biri. And then she was our teacher in grade four and uh, five, the grade six in the Wakanga. But I just remember that. Ah, and then grade seven, Takati Sanwani is Mr. Feveni. Shout out to that guy. Because I used to hate math. I was good in everything else, but I used to hate math. But I had to do it for my test. Okay, has no phone. Okay, that's okay. All right. Then Maris Brothers. Maris Brothers, Nyanga High. It's an all boys school. And trust me, man. It's like one of, if, if I were to like relive my life, I would not change that decision. 
I had the most awesome time because you know that every single sex school, I'm not pressure on. Like, we're going to go pay the team, so it's not gay. Taij Gabota, like, you know, like, I don't know. I just, I, I just really enjoyed Marist. And I believe that half of the person I am today was molded by my experience there, both on the artistic side, on the mental side, on the um, social side and everything. Man, I miss that place. Okay. Mm. All right. Anzana Prosper, you changed your hairstyle when you left the country for a short while. What inspired that? Okay, so even guys, you should understand good. I had had the same hairstyle my entire life since I was born. Like, Kuvandiz Wadu, guys, Nango Gero, you know, the simple cut here. Simple cut, you know, it's like a plain cut. Yaka cheaper here. Not because of the price or anything, but that's that's what my mom just preferred. Mom's one guy don't go get us in the single and get it. So the gumbo get and the gumbo and the squad my line. So my mom got his nature and him bar. My mom just said it's nature and him bar. So I get to come so. So yeah, so I wasn't very um what do you call this? I didn't explore much when it came to hairstyles and stuff. Until when I relocated to Dubai, I was like, ah, man, new environment, new faces. People are not going to judge me. And besides, because of the mixed races and nationalities in, in, in the UAE, you know, if you have kinky and camped hair, people will not be like, ah, go, So I kept my hair for a very long time. And then when I decided to go for a cut, um, I really liked Chadwick Bosman. You know, that guy who, um, the guy who did uh, Black Panther. The guy who was Black Panther. Yeah. Wakanda forever. I never freeze. So yes, that guy. So I was like, debate card to you guys. I'm sure I didn't exactly turn out like him, but uh, I think it got Black Panther light, so to speak. So yeah, and man, I've been loving it ever since. It's just distinct. At least it's something. Like, who got described? I'm trying to go and come and so. Kaka Giro, can you can you two rasta bag at least no crumbs on one. I guess when I need plain cards, I'm going to say I'm coming to Giro. Ah, so I need to guess. So yes, how did your family take your decision to pursue comedy as a full-time career? Okay, um, but they were cool with it. My, my family, the only thing is they didn't want me to sacrifice my education in exchange for pursuing what I love doing. They were always like, you know, we really appreciate whatever you're doing. We really appreciate whatever is going on. But uh, please just make sure that you finish school because I started this when I was still in school. So they were kind of worried because, you know, there's a time when we don't know no one get Get carried away, no more likes, no more views, and then you just start thinking the whole world revolves around Facebook and stuff. So, so it was a fair deal. Like I was just supposed to finish school and then do whatever I wanted with my life. Even if it, this didn't work out, I would still have a certificate. I would still have a degree to try and pursue other things. So that's what happened. But thank God um, they accepted it. They embraced it. And thank God I took a path that's really paying out for me and something that makes me really happy. Like, um... And that's pressure on most days, you know, like I don't hate this, you know, most, most people, even some people watching this, you go to work every day, but you actually hate it. You just want to be there for the paycheck. You can't wait until four o'clock and stuff like that. But I'm really privileged to be doing something I love, something I personally feel I'm a bit good at. So yeah. Okay. Liberty. Okay. This is not a question about me exactly. Said, should Christians listen? Which which music should Christians listen to? Is it a sin to listen to secular music? Okay, so this is a topic I would like have to deal with separately and share my own thoughts and opinions and stuff like that. But to sort of summarize and give a quick, clear answer is, um, okay, there is no verse in the Bible that says, do not listen to this and that artist. Do not listen to this one and that artist and stuff like that. But the Bible is clear that um, we become... Uh, what we are influenced by like the bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so the things that we get inside our system determine the kind of people we become determine the kind of things that we say determine the kind of way that we would like to think so i i believe that you know working with w working with god is a bit personal so i might say no no no, no don't do this order and then um you might find somebody with a different conviction. And then what I believe is, if you have a relationship with God, if you have a solid walk with God, and you are led by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, whenever you are about to, whenever you, you entertain what is wrong, there is a conviction that comes to you and tells you to abstain from it. 
So that come that 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 ranges from like the big 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 things to even the smallest smallest things that sometimes you can dress and it's inappropriate, right? You don't need a pastor to come and tell you if you have the Holy Spirit, he will convict you. So what I really encourage people usually when it comes to matters like this is there is no A, B, yes, no answer, black, white answer. Because if I say, no, don't listen to circular music, somebody's going to come and say, but some of them have positive messages. And that's really true. So it's all about conviction. So just um, work on your relationship with the Spirit of God and allow him to direct you. Did I answer well? Clap for me if I did. Okay. Family, and tell us about your family background. I love your talent and unora zaut uno. Oh, this is Tawana from Facebook. Okay, so yes, we are only two in our family. That's me and my little brother. Not so little anymore. He's about to finish his um, his um, he's about to finish his finals. It use it. Yes. Um. So yeah, that's that. Uh, both my parents are late. Um. But I'm really thankful for my mom who raised me who raised us rather in a very good and healthy christian envir environment she really put the work of god first she really put faith first it's something that she kept emphasizing and emphasizing and pressing into us and like the bible says train up a child in the way that he should grow and when he's older he will not depart from it so that's kind of what my mom did with us so you know so my devotion to god and devotion to his work and my belief and how i treat other people and relate to other people is probably based around my faith and how it was um imparted to me are you in full time for the work of god actually i am when you think about it because every time i get an opportunity a platform to share about god's goodness god's grace god's kindness i do that I may not be the pastor who dresses up in a suit, goes to church on Sunday, he's preaching or he goes to Bible school and stuff like that. But I do use every opportunity, every leverage, every advantage, every platform that I get to share how good God is with people. And I think that's full time. So, yes, I'm all in. I'm all in. What does A4KJ stand for? A4KJ stands for all for King Jesus. All for King Jesus. Everything is for King Jesus. That's what I believe. So I believe that all our gifts, all our talents, uh, you know, all our aspirations and our goals should ultimately bring back glory to the creator, to the one who gave us the gifts. Um, what happened to the guys that you started off with? Some of them are now pursuing their full-time careers. Another one is running an online magazine and doing business. Some have relocated to China. So when we started, it was more like we were just in a discovery phase when all of us were still trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. I was still in school studying electronic engineering. Oh yes, somebody asked that. So let me just respond right now. I have a degree in electronic engineering. That's what I studied. Um, so yes, um, um, so I was still in school, but I, I, I discovered that, you know what, I'm really passionate about making content, art and media and stuff like that. So I just kept pressing and pressing and pressing. And they also focused on their different other parts. But no love has been lost. We're still good friends, brothers and sisters. We talk all the time. They're my friends. Most of them, all of them actually, we go to the same church. So we meet here and there. Yeah, so we're good. Okay. Um. Well, I think I have answered i have answered all of the questions which church do you go to i go to zioja forward in faith well uh it says what inspires you okay i was expecting that question i knew i was gonna come well i'm inspired by a sense of purpose there is just a moment in my life i think when i was very young when i discovered that or when i just developed a belief that i was born to encourage others primarily that's what i just you know grew up believing so whenever i am around people i'm always trying to identify if there is like uh, despair or hopelessness and i try to reach out and try to encourage so that's like my driving force so a sense of purpose that's my greatest inspiration yeah internationally i love steve harvey i love steve harvey i love that guy he's funny he's inspirational and he's been, he's walked the journey like all parts of it, the highs, the lows, but he's still standing and he's one of the greatest entertainers of all time. I like Steve Harvey. And apart from Maputi, which other snacks do you enjoy? Yeah, Maputi no mafarira. But Chikafu guys, you know, farira spaghetti bolognese. You know, farira chibage, chaka gochkwa. Nenzungu ziyadza, biko, dovadza, homes kwa ziyadza, and it's fire. 
Jagara no farama fest of fries e Nando's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ne Closing and do fari re zo so guys. So yeah. Can I do it bad thing guys? Can I do it bad thing on the platform? Yeah. So that's about it. Thank you so much for coming through to my question and answer session. Please make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I love you. I appreciate you. Tell me if we should do this again. If you have any questions that you think I should have answered, both wild, crazy, normal questions, don't go to the GSA, guys. Don't go to Pindura. Don't go to Manya. Go to Palok Don't make it to GTA, guys. Those are the things you don't get. So bring those questions. Keep them coming. So bring those questions. Keep them coming. Come right now.